That's because I invented it from scratch, and uh, also because it's a really meaty language. You can just sink your teeth into it. Uh, and unlike the ancient language, I actually have an excellent dwarf accent. Dwarf accent. Uh, and that's because in Dwarvish, you're supposed to rule your R's by wiggling your uvula. So, let the wiggling commence. Farm Hrathkarach! Farm Jurgen Karmeter, no set of Goth Bastarnog, der Incesti Rakithen, Yok Isvorev Ash Berzuligur, der Durgrimst Ash Welden Rak Anuen, Moog Torak Jurgen Vren. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. Now, uh, book three, as some of you might have noticed, is a rather large book. And like most large books, it has a lot of sentences in it. And I'm actually very fond of some of those sentences. Uh, there's one, for example, which involves the, a bumbling bumblebee, which I probably should have cut in editing, but I was just a bit too fond of it. But uh, I want to read, out of all of these sentences, there's one that's my absolute favorite. And uh, I want to read it to you. And I just think that this sentence is particularly well-written, and uh, I think it just has a lot of literary merit. So I want to read you my very favorite sentence from book three. You ready to hear it? Yeah. 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 Die, puny human! <laughs> I mean, really, what's the point of writing fantasy if you can't write lines like die, puny human, every now and then? <laughs> All right, last book. Now, if you've not read book four, or book three, or book two, or even book one, rest assured, I'm not going to read any spoilers for you here. Okay. Um, what I am going to do, however, is I'm going to read, this is a little slightly longer reading, but this is the very end of the very first chapter of the very last book of the Inheritance Cycle. And uh, again, I hope you enjoy the reading. The sound was stabbing, slicing, shivering, like metal scraping against stone. Aragon's teeth vibrated in sympathy and he covered his ears with his hands, grimacing as he twisted around, trying to locate the source of the noise. Safira tossed her head, and even through the din, he heard her whine in distress. Aragon swept his gaze over the courtyard two separate times before he noticed a faint puff of dust rising up the wall of the keep from a foot-wide crack that had appeared beneath the blackened partially destroyed window where Bloodgarm had killed the magician. As the squeal increased in intensity, Aragon risked lifting one of his hands off his ears to point at the crack. Look! He shouted to Arya, who nodded in acknowledgement. He replaced his hand over his ear. Without warning or preamble, the sound stopped. Aragon waited for a moment, then slowly lowered his hands, for once wishing that his hearing was not quite so sensitive. Just as he did, the crack jerked open wider, spreading until it was several feet across, and raced down the wall of the keep. Like a bolt of lightning, the crack struck and shattered the keystone above the doors to the building, showering the floor below with pebbles. The whole castle groaned, and from the damaged window to the broken keystone, the front of the keep began to lean outward. Run! Aragon shouted at the Varden, though the men were already scattering to either side of the courtyard, desperate to get out from under the precarious wall. Aragon took a single step forward, every muscle in his body tense, as he searched for a glimpse of Rorin somewhere in the throng of warriors. At last, Aragon spotted him, trapped behind the last group of men by the doorway, bellowing madly at them, his words lost in the commotion. Then the wall shifted and dropped several inches, 
leaning even further away from the rest of the building, pelting Roran with rocks, knocking him off balance, and forcing him to stumble backward under the overhang of the doorway. As Roran straightened from a crouch, his eyes met Aragon's, and in his gaze, Aragon saw a flash of fear and helplessness, quickly followed by resignation as if Roran knew that no matter how fast he ran, he could not possibly hope to reach safety in time. A wry smile touched Roran's lips, and the wall fell. Does he live? Does he die? Read chapter two. All right, well, before we get to the signing, uh, I'd love to try to answer some of your questions. Uh, I just ask you to, to, just would remind you that if you have read book four, there are probably lots of people here who have not, so let's not tell them who lives and who dies. We'll leave that for the online comments. All right, so anything you want to know from the author, yes? Which dragon was your favorite to create and why? Which dragon was my favorite? Um, let me think. Sephira. <laughs> it was definitely Sephira. I'm hearing that you're maybe doing another cycle in the future, but you need a break from the, from the article in the paper. Uh, what am I doing in the future? Uh, <laughs> big question. Um, yes, it is possible. Well, it's not possible. I'm going to do this. Yes, I am going to return to Aragon's world to write more books at some point in the future. Uh, I laid the groundwork in both Brissinger and Inheritance for more books in Allegasia. Uh, but it's not going to be the first thing I do after finish. well, it is finished, after today's event, I guess. Um, I'm going to, I think, write some science fiction next, and then some <laughs> mysteries and thrillers and horrors and romance novels and fantasy and historical fiction and anything and everything I can get my hands on. Uh, I actually have about 20 to 30 completely new books all plotted out. Uh, however, I do love this series and I do love this world, so I will return to it at a certain point. Um, yes? What do you do to keep your inspiration and liveliness going? What do I do to keep my inspiration and liveliness going? Um, I read. I read, I read, I read. I watch lots of movies. I listen to lots of music. I look at lots of art. I try to feed my imagination, you know? Uh, and I just try to, to never lose my curiosity about the world around me. Simple as that. Um, yes, in the red shirt. Um, what did you think of the movie Aragon? What did I think of the movie? You did have to ask, right? Yeah. Uh, well, let's just, let me say this. I'm actually very glad that a movie was made because very few books are ever made into movies. And the movie introduced many new readers to my series, which I think is a good thing. Uh, you know, and I gave, I gave what input I could into the film, but ultimately they, <clears throat> the filmmakers, they did what they wanted to do in the movie and I did what I wanted to do in the books and everyone's free to enjoy them on their own terms. Uh, that said, it's possible we may see some more films in the future, so uh, fingers crossed on that. Uh, funny story, I was actually going to have a cameo in the movie. I was gonna, the timing didn't work out, but I was going to fly out to Budapest, and they were going to have, I, was gonna, I asked for this, I was going to have a cameo in the very last battle in the movie, and I was going to get my head chopped off by Aragon. <laughs> I don't know, I seem to have a thing about getting killed by my hero. Um... Yes, by the counter. What do you like to do on your time off from writing and book signings? Uh, what do I like to do on my time off? Uh, read, exercise, because I sit a lot, so I've got to move when I, when I get the chance. Uh, I do a lot of drawing. I did all the interior art in the books, uh, the map, the dragon eye. Uh, I also work, work with my hands quite a bit. Uh, I do metalworking, you know, knives, chain mail, woodworking. Uh, a lot of hiking, basically playing video games. Uh, Skyrim has its hooks in me right now. Uh, yeah, I know, it's horrible uh, and awesome. But uh, basically anything to give my mind a break from the writing. Uh, yes? Would you ever try and get involved in writing Star Wars novels? Would I ever get involved in writing Star Wars novels? Um, you know, I could, I'm sure I could do that if I wa wanted to. Uh, but the thing is, is that when you write something like Star Wars, it's work for hire because they own the property. And, uh, you know, I would prefer, I prefer to tell my own stories and, you know, it's just, it's a better, better deal as an artist as well. So I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon. 